let's talk about calculating mass moments of inertia for somewhat funny shapes. Funny in quotes. So for example, here I have a shape of a circle with a square missing in the middle. And it's probably got some depth, but we'll assume it's uniform in that direction. And this shape has an area density of 3.5 kilograms per meter squared. We would think about this as meters cubed if we knew that third dimension, but we don't, so it's the same uh, just per the area. And it asks us to calculate the mass moment of inertia about this somewhat funny shape. And the nice thing about mass moments of inertia, we could do the integrals here to calculate mass moment of inertia for this integral, for these shape using an integral. It gets a little messy here because you really want to use x's and y's when you have the square, and you want to use r's and thetas when you have the circle. You can do it, but I'm not going to do it here. Instead, I'm going to use the trick of addition and subtraction. So for this shape, we can say, you know what, this shape looks just like that circle that we always had, or that we've had before, and I'm just missing that little square in the middle. And I could easily calculate the mass moments of inertia of both of these shapes using a table, like the one in the textbook. And in fact, we can calculate the mass moment of inertia of this shape by doing this math, assuming that we have the solid uh, circle and subtracting out the square, assuming that the square just have taken out. So this works for all sorts of addition and subtraction in mass moments of inertia. So you, if we had another shape added in here, maybe we had a circle in the middle, then we could add that circle in. We could calculate as much addition and subtraction as we need to get the shape that we are given. So let's do this example. This is a great place to pause if you think you could figure it out from here and come back and check your work once you figured it out. So now that I've identified that addition and subtraction, I'm gonna do this subtraction. I need to calculate the mass moments of inertia of these two shapes. And I'm gonna look at my table of mass moment of inertias here to try and figure out what equations I'll use for these two shapes. So for the circle uh, that looks like a cylinder and it's through the ZZ axis in this uh, picture that I have. So this will be one half mr squared, and we even proved that in an earlier video. And then for this square shape, uh, in fact, I have a thin plane here, it's a rectangular shape, and it's 1 12th m, and they say a squared plus b squared, where the a and the b are the two lengths of the rectangle. And so I think I know all of that information. We'll have to do a little bit of math to figure out the masses, but I think we should be able to calculate the mass moment of the pressure here. So let's do it. So this I will equal this. Okay, so one half. The mass of this full cylinder will be the density, the area density, I'll call it rho sub a for area, times the area of the full circle, which is pi r squared and then times my r squared. So this is not the mass of the existing part, but it's what it would be if we had the whole thing, which is what we're calculating the mass moment of inertia for. We'll subtract out the part we've removed in a second. So subtracting out that part, here we go, 1 12th. The mass of this square will be the density, the area density, times the a times the b, which are the same in this case, and then it'll be a squared plus b squared. So these are all definitely terms that I know now. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and solve. So the mass moment of inertia will be one half. The area density was 3.5 kilogram per meter squared. Pi, I have r to the fourth now. My radius is 1.2 meters to the fourth. And then minus 1 12th, 3.5 kilograms per meter squared for my area density. A and B are both 0 0.75 here, so 0 0.75 meters squared, and then 0 0.75 meters squared plus 0 0.75 meters squared for A and B. And this gives me a mass moment of inertia of this object about the center of 11.22, and my units in both places should be kilogram meter squared. So here I had 
meters to the fourth over meters squared, so that's meters squared. And kilograms, that meters squared on the bottom, that'll cancel out with these meters squared here. I'll have extra meters squared. So in both cases, kilogram meters squared. So a final answer, 11.22 kilogram meters squared. So this demonstrates that we can use addition and subtraction for mass moments of inertia, especially when we're using tables with simpler shapes.